Hey everyone, I am so excited to be back with another Doc Martens video. It's been way too long since I've talked about Doc Martens. So today I am comparing these two styles, which is the 8053 and the 1461. I've made two dedicated videos for each of these styles, but I get a lot of questions on what is the difference between the two, um, which one is more comfortable, which one do I prefer between these two? So I thought I'd make this video and put the shoes side by side and show you exactly what I think about these two styles, um, how they're different, what size I have, what size I recommend you getting. Um, I'm, I'm gonna be talking about the fit, the quality, where you can find them, pretty much everything you need to know before you decide which style you should go with. As you might already know, I own a few different styles like the Doc Martin sandals, the Jaden Doc Martin boots. It's kind of an addiction of mine. So every time I buy a new pair, I always film a review to help those of you who aren't sure which style you should go with. So if you haven't watched those other videos, I'll link it down below as well. If you're a Doc Martens fan like I am and you want to see how I style my Doc Martens, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any future Doc Martens videos. Um, also, follow me on Instagram if you're not already. I post a lot of like outfit of the day type of pictures so you don't want to miss out on that either. Depending on the style of Doc Martens, Doc Martens can sometimes be difficult to buy. So for example, um, the 8053 is more limited than I would say the 1461. They're almost always sold out of these on the Doc Martens site. And I think the only size they have at the moment is like size 13 or 14 in men's. So when I purchased these a few months ago, I wanted them so bad. I think I might've checked their website every single day for like three months straight. And I purchased them as soon as they came back in stock. And soon after I purchased them, they were sold out again and I haven't seen them restock again. But then again, I haven't been checking every single day. So if you're lucky, you could get a hold of these. Whereas the 1461, it's a lot easier for you to purchase. Um, right now, for instance, they are fully in stock on the Doc Martens website. They also have other retailers like Revolve, they carry them at ASOS, Tilly's, um, PacSun, the list goes on. Chances are you're not gonna have a problem buying these in your size. So I would just go with a retailer um, that offers free shipping, free returns. So there's a lot more flexibility with the 1461s rather than um, the 8053s. So these are a classic you know, smooth leather, but you can get them in a lot of different um, leathers, a lot of different colors, finishes, um, patent leathers, things like that. Whereas the 8053, they're a lot more limited. I haven't really seen them in different leathers. Um, you might be able to get them in a different color, but yeah, they're just more limited. The 8053 is a little bit more expensive than these. So the 8053 is 155 versus the 1461s are 120. So if you have patience, time, and money, um, and you're willing to wait for the 8053s to come back in stock, um, get these. But if you want them quick and you want them right now, then get the 1461s. 8053 style looks very similar to um, the 1461s with some minor differences. And I think the biggest difference is going to be the height of the sole. So the 8053 has this like chunky um, sole, which is maybe I would say an inch and a half. I initially loved the chunky sole and that's why I was obsessed with getting these because I love the extra height that it gives me and it's just like a really cool edgy look. But this is a huge but. <laughs> I have to admit that um, they are so uncomfortable and when you wear them for a long time, they're just straight up painful. The thick soles just makes it really stiff so there's no bend in the toes at all. And I've had these shoes for, I don't know, like a year now and I don't think they're broken in. And honestly, I don't think they'll ever break in because the soles are just so thick, it's not going to get any softer. It's gonna stay stiff like this. 
when I'm walking in these, it literally feels like clown shoes. I'm just picking up my feet and plopping them back down just like this. And they don't have any bend. Um, and I don't even try to bend it because if I do, my heel just slips off of the back. The 1461 has a thinner sole. Um, they don't have the same edgy look as the 8053, but they are so much more comfortable than the 8053. Because they don't have that thick sole, they're not gonna be as heavy. Um, I'm able to bend my toes a bit. Still not a whole lot, but I mean more so than the 8053. They're just easier to break in than the 8053. So I actually find myself wearing the 1461s more so than the 8053s because they're just more comfortable. Let me know which Doc Martin style you have in the comments section below. I'm so curious what style is the most popular and if you have the thick soles, how do you feel about it? Are they super painful like mine or do you love it? Let me know because I'm dying to know how people actually wear these. So the 8053 has five holes and the 1461 has three holes. So the amount of eyelet holes doesn't really make a huge difference to me. It doesn't affect the comfortability level or style all that much. So I kind of feel indifferent about it. Another big difference between the two styles is the padded ankles. So the 8053 has this like padded ankle here and the 1461 does not. It doesn't have that same padded ankle. So this was a huge misconception on my part. Another huge reason why I purchased the 8053 was because I thought the padded ankle would make the shoes more comfortable. Let me repeat, these shoes are not comfortable at all. There's nothing about these shoes that make them comfortable, not even the padded ankle. It's honestly a shame because I had really high hopes for these shoes. The padded ankle doesn't do anything. They don't make the shoes more comfortable. I guess it helps the leather from digging into your skin. Um, but since the shoes have such a heavy sole, they are constantly slipping off and it's rubbing against my ankle. Um, and the padding doesn't really help with the blisters that end up forming on your heels. So I have a quick story time. This happened to me the other day and I'm gonna tell you the story because I think it really paints a good picture of how uncomfortable these shoes really are. So I went to the mall with my sister wearing these shoes and you guys, it was the mall. I thought these shoes would be okay because, you know, I'm just going to the mall. It's not like I'm walking miles or miles or hiking or anything, but no, you guys, my ankles were bleeding. At one point, my sister and I had to swap shoes because I just needed a break. The shoes were rubbing in the same spot and I couldn't take it anymore. So we literally had to swap shoes and then her feet started hurting. So don't, be naive like me and think this little padded collar is going to save you from you know the leather cutting into your skin or the blisters because the blisters, they're gonna get you. Like I said, the 1461s are lighter. They're a little bit less stiff, so I don't get as many blisters with these than I do with the 8053s. So let's take a second to talk about sizing because it could be very confusing. I bought these a few times and I returned them a few times just to get like the perfect size. So unlike the classic Doc Martens that lace up all the way at the ankles, um, these low ankle Doc Martens can be really tricky when it comes to size. If they are too small, they're gonna end up hurting your toes um, in the front up here. And if they're too big, they'll end up rubbing the back of your ankles and cause blisters. So with the 8053, they're gonna do that regardless of what size you get. It doesn't even matter. Um, they're gonna rub the back regardless. So my normal shoe size is usually a size six and a half, but with both styles, I got a six. Um, since Doc Martens don't, they don't carry half sizes, I always recommend sizing down with these styles that are low at the ankles because they're gonna slip off your feet if they're a little bit too big. So even going half a size smaller, I still had to purchase an insert because my heel was still slipping off of the back here. If you can see the insert, uh, let me try to get the camera out. 
I don't know if you can see the insert right here, but it's right in there. It has like a little extra padding. I'll leave um, the Amazon link down below. If you can, go to the store, try them on. Um, it would be really helpful for you to just try them on and walk around the store, get a feel for them. If you don't have a store around you and you decide to buy them online from like a Doc Martens website, you are able to return them within 30 days, um, but they will charge you $7 for shipping. So with the 1461s, they carry them at ASOS, Amazon, um, a lot of different websites that allow free returns. So I would suggest purchasing them on there instead of like the Doc Martens site. So that way you have the opportunity to return them for free um, until you can find like the perfect size that works for you. So comparing the two ankle styles versus like the classic Doc Martens style that lace up at the ankles. So the classic Doc Martens style is going to be a lot more comfortable um, because I can tighten the laces around the ankle and they can stay nice and secure. There's no rubbing, there's no blisters. Um, they're just a lot easier to break in than these ankle styles. So if you're new to Doc Martens and you don't own Doc Martens at all, I would suggest buying the ankle high ones before you buy the low ones. In my opinion, they're just gonna be a lot more comfortable and they're a lot easier to break in. And obviously, if you live somewhere um, cold where it snows, it's just a better option. With both styles, socks are absolutely necessary. Make sure you wear athletic socks with both of these. It's gonna help you with um, the blisters. It's gonna offer you that layer of protection. There is just no way you can wear these without socks. They're gonna rub and they're gonna hurt way too much. So even if you're going to the mall and you think you're all good, no, always wear socks with these. Trust me, it's a huge mistake if you don't. I get a lot of questions on how I break them in. And well, a year later, we are still trying to break them in, you guys. <laughs> My biggest advice with all Doc Martens, not just with these two styles, um, but don't buy Doc Martens right before you go on a trip thinking you're going to wear them the whole time you're on the trip. I made that mistake once and I was in pain the entire trip and it wasn't even fun. So take the time to break them in. Patience is key. Um, you wanna start by wearing them around the house and wearing them to like get coffee or run errands. Just wear them for like a short amount of time and slowly build, build it up and wear them for longer and longer. Also, this is a really good tip to remember um, and you're gonna be thanking me for it is bring band-aids with you. If you're nervous about them hurting your feet, bring band-aids as a precaution. Carry them in your purse, your wallet, your car, whatever. Just keep them on you just in case you need um, band-aids as like a buffer. Sometimes though, like with the 8053, there is just no breaking them in. You just have to accept that they're gonna hurt and there's nothing that you can do about it. So wear them knowing that they're gonna hurt and plan your day accordingly. If you have any questions about sizing or anything like that, just leave me a comment down below and I'll try to answer them as best as I could. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more Doc Martin videos or if you just want to see more fashion videos in general. If you want to see how I style these Doc Martens, don't forget to follow me on my Instagram to see all of my outfit of the day pictures. Bye!